Welcome everybody to another science session from Gumbo Limbo Nature Center. My name is Frankie and today we will be learning some ways to compare and classify different types of plants. So first off, how are plants classified by scientists? Well, an important way scientists classify plants is to sort them by how they reproduce. First, let's point out that there are plants with and without flowers. These two groups are known as flowering and non-flowering plants. For some flowering plants, you might recognize physical characteristics such as a large, colorful, and sweet-smelling flower. This attracts an animal, like a butterfly or a bee, to pollinate the flower. Of course, not all flowers have the same physical characteristics. Some flowering plants don't have large flowers, but small ones. To the naked eye, some flowers aren't very colorful at all. An example of a tiny, plain colored flower would be from the palm tree. There are flowers that have no scent, and even some with a smelly, putrid stink. Those are looking to attract not butterflies and bees, but flies and, and flesh-eating beetles. Yum. Good thing for our noses. Plants with those smelly physical characteristics live only deep inside far away rainforests and museums. Phew! But regardless of the physical characteristics, flowering plants reproduce by forming seeds inside fruits, vegetables, or nuts. The seed provides the young plant inside of it with a food supply and a protective coating. And seeds can tell whether or not there's enough water or nutrients outside of them. They'll wait until they're in the right spot to germinate and grow. Thanks to their protective coating, they can last a long time waiting if they need. The oldest seed to ever germinate was from a small flowering plant in Siberia, northern Russia. It was dug up from a squirrel stash and was stored 32,000 years ago. There are also plants that have no flowers at all, such as pine trees, cypress trees, coontees, ferns, and algae. Pines, cypress, and kunti use cones instead of flowers that will be pollinated and create the seeds found in a dry, woody cone. So, there are plants that make seeds with and without flowers. Did you know that there are even some that don't make seeds at all? But without seeds, how could plants reproduce? Great question. Non-flowering plants like ferns and algae reproduce by creating spores. Spores are also a young plant ready to grow, but are made in a different way. Spore-producing plants are pollinated and spread with the help of wind and water. Spores are different than seeds also in that they don't include a protective coating or food supply. With no protection or food supply, only spores that land in the perfect spot will grow. Luckily, there are many, many, many spores released. So enough will survive to grow into new spore producing plants. Imagine with me, if you will, two team leaders sending their explorers out into nature. Palm sends out a well-prepared seed venturer. They have a protective coating and a food reserve. Another team leader, Fern, sends out many explorers. Get it? Explorers? Yeah. Anyway, so the explorers, as you might imagine, don't always do so well. They might land in a place that is difficult to grow. The explorers don't have a food supply to get them started, even when they do find a good spot. But Fern's strategy is to send out many, many, many explorers so that enough will survive to germinate into a new spore-producing plant. The seed venturers come prepared with protective coating to shield them 
when the conditions are not yet good for growing. They also have food reserves to keep them alive and help them germinate once they find the right spot. Those food reserves can make them tasty to animals though, so they still need to be careful. <laughs> so seeds won't always make it either, but they definitely come more prepared. Well, that wraps everything up. Thank you for joining me to learn about classifying plants. This is Frankie again from Gumbo Lindo Nature Center, signing off. <laughs>